Hello everyone, this is Mr. Buffington and today we're talking about letters in math. Why are there letters in math? Why are you messing with those perfectly good numbers to throw in letters? And that is the big question for today. Why, why, and why? I'm going to give you three reasons about why numbers are, or letters are used in math and hopefully it'll help you to understand how they're used and maybe understand a little bit about why they are important and why why mathematicians use them and why I don't know just why 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 first off I want you to remember back to when you were young when you were young you would see a math um, expression written in this way 4 plus 2 equals blank or you might have seen it like this 4 plus 2 equals and a square right a box that you would write your answer in then as you progressed throughout your math you would get something like this 8 plus blank is equal to 10 or 8 plus square is equal to 10 these sentences are the basis for what we're going to talk about essentially what we do with these letters is we're sticking a letter in here so one reason why they use letters instead of blanks or numbers is just as a place filler. So when you see, especially first um, initial expressions and equations written with these letters, you can view them largely as a place filler, a blank. I know when some of my students were first learning algebra and pre-algebra and they started seeing those letters, it threw them off. And putting a blank there was a helpful tool to get them to the point of being more comfortable with letters. So again, when you were young, it was a blank or a box. When, now that you're older, it is a letter. And I'm going to show you these two equations written with a letter. There's what it might look like now, now that you're older, 4 plus 2 equals x, or 8 plus x equals 10. It's the same thing you've seen before when you're just asking to solve for it it means exactly the same thing we could actually fill it in with anything it doesn't even need to be a letter it could be a a, a sun or a happy face or a heart it doesn't matter but over time mathematicians have used letters to represent numbers so try and not get hung up too much on what does the letter mean or does it spell a word or i've been sounding out letters since i was in kindergarten why are they in number sentences now it's just a place filler so that's the first thing there are a couple more reasons why we do use specific um, letters and i'll get into those in a second but first off the very basic reason is that it's a place filler and it means the same as a blank all right, when you're first solving things, just think of it as a blank and it's just a space, a place filler. And they use letters like X or A or B or whatever. Next, why? Let's talk about video games. This is Jim. Jim has statistics, strength, intelligence, and endurance, right? We're building up a character inside of a video game. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Jim run one mile through some obstacles. Go Jim! I'm Jim! I'm awesome! Yay! Good job Jim! So Jim's statistics, remember, had strength, intelligence, and endurance. When we're playing a video game, what you want to do now that he's succeeded in his obstacle course is that we want to add one to Jim's strength, right? That makes sense. So his stats will now be this. 1 plus 1 equals 2. And I want you to think for a second about what happened just there. What did we do to Jim's statistics? In our game, we just, we're just going to see, we just will see Jim's stat improve. But again, I want you to think about that. Did we add 1 plus 1? Is that how Jim's st stats improve? Adding 1 plus 1? Because I'm going to put it to you that we didn't just add 1 plus 1. We added strength plus 1. And that's an important distinction. Now watch what happens when I add 1 plus 1 again. 
So let's have Jim run again. Go, Jim. I'm running. I'm ducking. I'm running. Yay! So what happened to Jim's strength? Is it going to be 1 plus 1? And the answer is no. He's already had 1 plus 1 happen. This should be 1 plus 2, right? Jim's statistics should be improving. So we're not adding 1 plus 1. We're adding strength plus 1. And that gets into a lot of other questions. What if Jim adds half a strength point or three uh, strength points? Or what if Jim loses 2.3 strength points? We can't just add one plus one all the time. So we can't use numbers to say what's going to happen to Jim's strength. We can't. It has to change. So the only way to keep everything straight is to have a label. And we need a label for strength. And then you do your adding or your subtracting to the strength, right? Strength is equal to one. Strength is equal to two. And the value for strength can change. But we have to have a running total of what does strength mean. And it has to be represented by something. So what I um, put it to you in math ease, and we're going to use math ease a little bit today. Basically, instead of saying 1 plus 1, we would say strength plus 1. Or, if we wanted to actually do it more accurately, the way that maybe a video game programmer would do, is that you'd have two variables. You'd have strength, and then you'd have change. And then you'd add strength plus change. And whether your change is a positive or negative wouldn't matter. This, this expression, strength plus the change amount, would always work. So if you're programming and you're creating a video game, you would need to have those what we call variables, okay? And the variables, S for strength and C for change, can be anything. But I just want to point that out to you, that when we're talking about video games or other things that change, like just about everything in life, you need to define your terms. And that's basically one other reason why we use letters in there. Because a number wouldn't represent strength because that number changes over time. But S could represent strength, and S could change in value over time. I hope that one made sense. Um, I thought maybe the video game thing would be helpful. Um, again, that was just a narrow example of, of one time where we would use it, but you can see the applications would be, you know, pretty huge. And the third Y that I'm going to put to you when we're first starting to learn is groups. We're going to say a class has six students because I don't like to draw more than six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six students. Four are girls and two are boys. Bing! There we go. We have a classroom with four boys and two girls. Now, another girl joins the class, so we say, how many girls are there now? If we have variables, they would look like this. Boy plus boy plus boy plus boy plus girl plus girl plus girl. Right? That's our class. And adding that third girl is just adding plus G to our entire list. In your mind, you might have added one to the number of girls. You said, well, girls was two, and so now we have three because I added one. But what you didn't do is you didn't probably recount all of the boys when you added on one girl because we have them grouped. Again, boys are B and girls are G. So we added on one G, but we didn't change the Bs. The Bs stayed the same. And that's one cool thing that variables can do. All right? Variables can stay the same or change based on what you're adding to them or taking away from them. All right? So again, I'm going to write this down in math ease to try and make it kind of bring it all together here. We're going to write the math sentence that saves a little bit of space. So B plus B plus B plus B, all of our boys, is four Bs. And G plus G plus G is three girls. So what we can do is we can write it as four boys plus three girls or four B plus three G. And it saves us a little bit of space. Think about how long it would take if you were writing out the entire class 
has Jim and Sam and Frank and Fred, plus Samantha, and plus Vivian, plus Mary, right? It would be this big, huge, long thing. Instead, we're going to condense it down. Now, if we weren't dividing into boys and girls and we were just saying how many students are there, we could say there's seven students, seven S for students. And then when a new student comes in, we just add one more S and we would have eight students, right? But if we are dividing into groups, we want to have those variables to be different for each group and variables can do that. We can have four boys and three girls and show that in a math sentence. And that's something you can't do with numbers. When you have all numbers in a math sentence, they all get simplified together into a single number. When you have variables, this 4b plus 3g stays the way that it is. So it's a way to group things together that you can't do when you're only using numbers. All right. So those are three whys about why we have letters in math. We've got why, why, why? Well, as a label, as a variable, and as a way to make groups. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up and share it with some friends or maybe share it with your math teacher if you think they might um, find it beneficial. I hope it was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.